morning everybody i am anusha from csc department working as assistant professor in institute of aeronautical engineering in my videos i was discussing about programming with objects which is based on java in the previous video we have discussed about connecting to database and various operations using jdbc in today's video we will be discussing about graphical user interface programming with java the awt class hierarchy and we'll just look into the swing um, swing structures so <clears throat> awt or the abstract window toolkit is an api which is used for graphical user interface or to provide window based applications in java they provide a set of classes and interfaces which can be used to uh, manage these graphical user interface they contains these abstract window toolkit contains uh, components such as buttons menus list etc they also contains containers which will hold these smaller containers uh, such as windows menu bars and dialog boxes etc there are some limitations for awt which the base uh, first one is that it is platform dependent since it is platform dependent all the components will be displayed in according to the uh, operating system use that means the look and feel of a button used in a windows operating system will differ from the look and feel which is offered in apple so or unix so such so because these awt components are platform dependent they uh, they work differently another disadvantage is that it is heavy weight that is that means all the components of these uh, awt will be using the resources of the operating system that uh, so that these uh, awt calls for the uh, calls the native operate operating system subroutines to create components such as text box buttons etc so these were the two main disadvantages of awt which is platform dependent and heavy weight so because of these um, disadvantages they came up with the swing hierarchy now this is the basic structure uh, basic awt class hierarchy we have the component class on top from these component class the container button label checkbox choice scroll bar and other co uh, uh, components are created so the component class forms a base for all these low level containers uh, these containers will be placed on top of this component class again this container class will contains the window and the uh, window uh, window class and the panel class over the window class we can have this frame and dialog box so this is the basic awt class hierarchy now if you look into uh, the difference between awt and swings the swings are much lighter in weight so they don't use the operating systems the native operating system uh, functions to display its components but awt they are heavy weight components and awt does not support pluggable look and feel but swing supports pluggable look and feel the awt programs are not portable but the swings program are portable it is awt is one of the oldest framework for creating uh, guis but swing is a, a new one new framework for creating guis the awt component require awt package the, which is available inside the java.awt package whereas the swing components require java x swing package the awt supports limited number of gui controls the swing provides advanced gui controls like swing provides advanced gui controls like jtable jtab pane etc more code is needed to implement awt control functionality whereas swing is less less code is required the awt doesn't follow a model uh, <coughs> view controller uh, uh, structure whereas swing follows the mvc structure now let's look into swings so uh, because of the disadvantage of awt they have come up with swings they are also used to create graphical user interfaces it is a framework that provides more powerful and flexible gui components than awt it is built on the foundation of awt the swing came up under the foundation of awt so the base forms the awt it is rooted in the model view controller design it calls the mvc architecture calls for a visual application to be broken up into three separate parts 
a model, the view and the controller. The model is that which represents the data for the application. The view is the visual representation of that data and the controller take users input on the view and translate that to the changes in the model. <coughs> the two swing features are they are light, lightweight and it supports a pluggable look and feel. It is lightweight because it is entirely written in Java. That means it is platform independent and it supports a pluggable look and feel. That means it defines a look and feel that is consistent over all the platforms used. The meta look and feel is the is the Java look and feel, which is the default look uh, default view for the Swing platform. The pluggable look and feel, ref, uh, the look refers to the appearance of the um, widgets, GUI widgets, and feel refers to the way the widgets behave. The Sun JRE's, Sun uh, JRE provides the following look and feels. Cross-platform look and feel. This is the Java look and feel, also called as the metal. It looks same on all the platform. It is a part of JV, Java API, Java Swing, uh, Plaf metal and it is the default that will be used if you do nothing to your code to set the different look to set a different look and feel. The system look and feel the next one is the system look and feel wherein the application uses the look and feel that is native to the operating system it is running on. The system look and feel is determined at runtime where the application asks the system to run the diff, run the uh, a system to return the name of the appropriate look and feel. Synth is the basis for creating your own look and feel with an XML file. Multiplexing is the way the UI methods delegate to a number of different look and feel implementations at the same time. This is the swing hierarchy wherein every component is derived from the object class. So the component class has to uh, two parts, the container and the J component. So it, this parts for, forms the swing. This parts forms the swing. So under the J component, they have the label, J list, J table, J combo box, J slider, etc. The swing GUI consists of two items, the components and the container. The component is an independent visual control, control such as push button or a slider. And the container control holds the group of components. Thus, a container is a special type of component that is designed to hold other components. For a component to be displayed, it must be held within a container. All the swing components are derived from the J component class of the swing. It supports the pluggable look and feel and it, it, it inherits the AWT classes container and component. Uh, in the table given, these are the various sync components which is available inside Java Swing package. So uh, there are two types of containers inside um, inside Swing, which is the heavyweight container and the lightweight container. The heavyweight container inherit the AWT component and container class whereas the lightweight container inherit the J component class of the swing. The uh, top level container or the heavyweight container form, uh, are, uh, is formed by the J frame, J applet and the J dialog. They inherit the AWT classes component and container. These containers do not inherit the J component class. The top level containers are heavyweight. The one of the most commonly used application is JFrame and the one used for applets is J applet. Now let's look into the model view controller connection, the MVC connection. The, M, uh, the uh, MVC connection, it is, uh, I mean, when any component you take, it must contain, it implicitly contain three parts. The way the component looks when rendered on the screen, the way the component reacts to the user, the state information associated with that component. The swing architecture follows the model view controller design. A model is that which represents the data for the application. It corresponds to the state information associated with the component. For example, in case of a checkbox, the model contains a field that indicates if the box is checked or unchecked. The view part indicates the visual representation of that data. It determines how the component is displayed on the screen, including any aspects of the view that are affected by the current state of the model. 
and the controller is that that takes the user input on the view and translate that to the changes in the model. It determines how the component reacts to the user. For example, if the user clicks a checkbox, the controller reacts by changing the model to reflect the user's choice, that is whether it is checked or unchecked. The swings look and feel is made possible by its model delegate architecture because the view, view look and controller uh, controller are separate from the model, the look and feel can be changed without affecting how the component is used within a program. Conversely, it is possible to customize the model without affecting the way the component appears on the screen or responds to the user input. Now let's look into the various layout managements. The layout management in, uh, disp uh, 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 arranges the various components on various um, containers on the components object. So with, there are different types of layout managers available. The It automatically arranges your controls within a window by using some type of algorithm. Each container object has a layout manager associated with it. The layout manager is an instance of any class that implements the layout manager interface. The layout manager is set by the layout method if no call to set layout is called, then the default layout manager is used. Whenever a container is resized, the layout manager is used to position each of the components within it. The structure is public interface layout manager. It defines the interface for classes that uh, know how to lay, the, lay out the containers. One of the type of uh, 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 layout manager is the border layout. The syntax for border layout is public class border layout extends objects, implements layout manager and serializable. A border lay, uh, layout lays out a container arranging and resizing its component to fit in five regions, the north, south, east, west and center. Each region may have more, may uh, contain uh, no more than one component and is identified by the corresponding constant the north side is referred by the constant north, similarly south side by the south, same way we have for each constants for east, west and center. The two co constructors which we can make use of uh, creating border layout are uh, the one without parameter and one by specifying gap between. So the first uh, first constructor it constructs a border layout without no without any gap between the components, whereas the second uh, second constructor it creates a border layout with the specified gaps between the components. So uh, the this is the structure of a border layout wherein this window is divided into five different zones: the north zone, which is uh, defined by the public static final int north. The west zone is divided by the west constant. Similarly, the east, east center and the south zone is defined by each of these. Which uh, So, each of these variables are a public static and final constants. Let's look into a simple example of uh, uh, giving a border layout. Here, we have created a class named as border inside which we are creating a JFrame object. Now, inside the constructor of border, uh, we are creating the object of, of JFrame uh, and we are creating four, uh, five buttons named North, South, East, West and Center. So, these are the five buttons which is created. So, to create a button, we make use of the J button class, which is again a component inside the swing. Now, to add these components, uh, add these buttons onto the uh, frame, we may uh, we call the add method on that. So when we call add method, so we are calling the object of the frame, the J frame. On that object, we are making call to add method. So you this add method will add the button B1 in the uh, layout of north. So that means B1 is a button which is uh, which is labeled as north, and whereas it will be placed at the north side of the uh, north side of that window. Similarly, uh, when we call uh, add on, when we uh, when we call add on B two, when we call add on B two, B two, what happens here? 
the button B2 is labeled south, that button is made to sit on the south uh, south com uh, south side of the that table, south com uh, constant of that table. Similarly, we are adding the uh, com uh, bu third button, which is labeled east on the east uh, east um, frame, the west on the west frame, and the center. So, uh, to add these components, we are calling the add method. And once these added, uh, once these uh, buttons are added, we are setting the frame size to 300, 300, and we are setting the visibility to true. So, if we don't set the visibility to true, then we will not be able to see that. So, inside main, then we are creating the object of the border class. So, uh, once if this program is executed, we get the output like this. So, this will be so since uh, we had added the north button on the north location, we get this this part this part of the um, of that window is uh, labeled as north. So that button name. So we cre we created a button named as north. Created a button name. We created a button named as north, and that north button is added onto the location of north. So that is why we get a button with this. This is a button which is placed in the north uh, north space. Similarly, we get buttons placed on the uh, west, center, east, and south. Next is a grid layout. So the syntax for grid layout is public class grid layout extends objects which implements the layout manager and serializable uh, interfaces. This layout manager lays out the containers components in a rectangular grid. So it looks like a calculator form. And this container is divided into equal size container and one component is, bleach, is placed in each rectangle. So in this, so this is the basic structure of a grid layout. We can have any number of lines, uh, any number of rows and columns in it. The grid layout with the constructor of grid layout without parameters, it creates a grid layout with default one column per component in a single row. The grid layout with uh, two parameters wherein one first parameter indicates the row and the second parameter indicates the column. This creates the grid layout with the specific number of rows and columns. So this this constructor will if we pass five six it will create a grid layout of five columns and sorry five rows it creates a five uh, grid layout of five rows and six columns. Uh, next, the, an another grid layout is, by, is specifying the gap between the components. So this grid layout specify, it's, um, uh, it creates a grid layout with the specified number of rows and columns. The horizontal and vertical gaps are set by H gap and V, v gap variables and they are set to some specific values. The horizontal gaps are placed between each columns and the vertical gaps are placed between each rows. This is an example of creating a, a grid layout. So here also we have uh, created a reference of frame and inside that frame uh, and we have this constructor for this grid layout. So we are creating an object of the frame Sim in the same way in the, as in the previous example, we are creating set nine buttons. Nine buttons are created with labels one to nine. And they are named as button one to nine. So button one, two, three till nine are being created. So we are creating nine buttons to place in nine cells of that grid layout. Now, all these buttons has to be added onto each of these grid. So <coughs> to add each button onto this grid, we are calling the Add, but add method of that uh, of that uh, add button uh, add method is being called which adds each of these buttons onto the frame which is of grid layout uh, uh, which is of the form grid layout so all these nine buttons are laid and we are setting the layout of, we are setting the layout of the frame as grid layout so this is the syntax this is the syntax by which we define so here we are specifying three rows and three columns so because of which we get three rows and three columns we got the three rows and three columns because of this grid layout structure so once that layout is set to grid onto these lay onto these layouts we are adding these buttons so these buttons get, get added onto this grid layout then we call this um uh, we are setting the frame size to 300 by 300 and the visibility to 2. So, 
once this is executed once the statement is executed we get the output as the uh, grid layout in the as in the picture next uh, next layout is the flow layout which arranges the components one after that another in a in row like in each line so it is this flow layout is used to arrange the components in a line one after the other this is the default layout of applet or panel the flow direction is determined by the containers component orientation property and one it can be one of the two values it can be component orientation left to right or component orientation right to left the flow layouts are typically arranged used to arrange buttons in a panel it arranges buttons horizontally until no more buttons fits in the same line the line alignment is determined by the align property the structure of uh, <coughs> flow layout is public class flow layout extends object implements layout manager and serializable interface there are three five fields for the flow layout class which is uh the final int and uh, int uh, sorry left right and center which will place the but uh, the components to the left right or the center and the leading uh, leading constant it indicates that that it indicates that each row of the component should be justified to the lead leading edge of the containers orientation for example left to uh, left in left to right orientations and trailing means it indicates that each row of the component should be justified to the trailing edge of the containers orientation that means it should be uh, uh, justified towards the right in left to right orientation these are the three constructors which is used to align uh, the uh, empty constructor it creates a flow layout with a centered alignment and default five unit horizontal and vertical gap the flow layout int align uh, with single parameter it constructs a flow layout with specified alignment and a default five unit horizontal and vertical gap the flow layout uh, with three parameters which specify the alignment horizontal and vertical gap it creates the new uh, flow layout manager with the indicated alignment and the indicated horizontal vertical gaps now this is the program for aligning the uh for flow layout so we have to import the flow layout uh flow layout um package the button and the jframe since we are making use of them so inside the flow layout class we are creating a reference to the jframe and in uh inside the constructor we are creating an object of the jframe and again we are creating a few buttons named labeled as okay cancel and close that means we are creating three buttons named as okay cancel and close and this we have to align on to the align on to our um frame so uh, these buttons are then added on to the frame and then we are calling the flow layout so once the flow layout we are calling it in the right alignment way so they it is setting the flow layout of right alignment <laughs> and uh, we are setting the size of the frame frame to be 300 by 300 and the visibility is set to true uh so once we execute that program we get something like this so we have these buttons being aligned in a in a line and this structure is for uh, is the flow layout uh, design next is the a card layout so this card layout it uh, it again extends the ob its structure is public class card layout extends object implements lay layout manager to and serializable it treats each components in a container as a card only one card will be visible at a time and the container acts as a stack of cards so it is like we have a stack of cards so uh, whatever is on the top of that stack will be visible so this uh, defines a set of methods that allow an application to flip through these cards sequentially or to show a specified card there are these are the constructors the empty constructor will create a new card layout with gaps of size 0 and the uh, constructor with two uh, two parameters it creates a card layout with specified horizontal and vertical gaps which they are specified by the variables h gap and v gap and this is our example for creating a card layout frame wherein um, we uh, 
we have uh, we are ex creating this uh, card layout example which will implements the action listener so this action listener is used to list uh, is used for event management that means if that button is clicked some operation has to be done so here what we do whenever a button is clicked it will shuffle the card so how many or whatever cards are available that card will be shuffled around so here also we are um, creating three buttons and inside that uh, we again we are creating a an uh, reference for the container class and we are obtaining the content pane then we are setting the card layout to uh, to 30 40 so this will create an object with 40 horizontal space and 30 vertical space then we are setting out uh, setting it to the uh, card layout now there are um, three buttons uh, with the labels as 3 cca written in roman numerals 3 ccb 3 written as an, uh, a number and the 3 and a sentence so these are the three buttons which is created and to these buttons we are adding the action listener method so that some operation has to occur when that button is clicked so when that button is clicked the action some action has to be performed so what is the action perform it will uh, take the next card available on it it will be displaying the next card which is available so to the uh, to these buttons we are adding the action listeners and these uh, these uh, uh, buttons are added onto the um, card layout so once that button is um, uh, once that button is uh, fixed uh, I mean once that button is clicked the next card which is available be under it will be vis will be made visible and um, so that operation is uh, uh, set using the action listener and action performed methods which is used for event management and inside the main class we are setting the uh, frame size to be 100 and its visibility to true, uh, true. and we are setting the def uh, default close operation on exit on close so what will happen when this window is closed it will exit that window so once so what happens here is that we will get so first we will have a, a card written as 3 csca underneath we'll have a card written as under this so it will be like a stack of cards we'll have 3 cscb and under that we will have 3 csc c so when we click on this first button first button this will uh, this will clear and the second button whichever uh, the 3 CSCB will come on top so it again when we click on this 3 CSCB that will uh, that will go and live so what happens is that we have one card about the on the other so we have this 3 CSCA on top when we click on 3 CSCA it will go under the uh, under the 3 CSCC card so the the one just below the 3 CSCA is the 3 CSCB so once we click on 3 CSCA it will go under the 3 CSCC card and the 3 CSCB card will come on top so we can see the 3, uh, 3 CSCB card when we click on 3 CSCB that 3 CSCB will go under the 3 CSCA and the 3 CSCC card will be made visible on top so for every click it will be the topmost card will be going under the last card so in that way we are getting a shuffle we are creating a shuffling of cards the next layout is a grid bag layout so here it <coughs> <coughs> excuse me so the grid uh, grid bag layout extends the object and implements the layout manager to and serializable uh, interfaces the uh, grid bag layout class is used to align the components vertically and horizontally along their base or along their baseline each grid bag layout object contains a dynamic rectangular grid of cells with each components occupying one or more cells called its display area the grid bag constraints class helps the uh, specify constraints for the components that are laid out using the grid bag layout the components may not be of the same size. The grid bag, <coughs> this is a program for um, for grid bag layout. So here we are creating a class named as grid bag layout example, which is extending the JFrame. 
then an object is created. So inside this object, we are creating an object. Uh, inside the constructor, we are creating an object named of named a grid with of grid bag layout. We are set uh, cre um, creating an ob uh, object of grid bag constraints to define constraints for those components, and then we are setting the layout of layout to be grid bag layout, <coughs> and we are giving a label for that. Uh, we are giving a label for that window named as grid bag layout example and then so to prepare these slides I had made use of the Java complete reference textbook 9th edition by Herbert Schild and the uh, Oracle documents Oracle uh, tutorial documents from the uh, website from its docs website and the um, Samantha's website and Java T point website to prepare these slides. So in my videos, I had discussed about uh, graphic u uh, graphical user interface programming with Java, the AWT class hierarchy swings, and layout managers, and about layout managers. That is all for the uh, video today. In, uh, <coughs> in uh, thank you for watching my video. We will be continuing with the uh, in the next session. Thank you. Like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.